Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, I really want to thank Mel Science for their sponsorship of Tech Time Radio. Do you know what Mel Science is a subscription service that offers monthly science boxes that combine hands-on experiences with VR, virtual reality, and of course, AR, augmented reality technology to engage kids in study in science. Yeah, man. They send you monthly science boxes that are STEM related. What does STEM mean, sir? STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. These projects that they send you are not only super fun, but they're also educational. They come with very clear instructions that your kids can easily follow them along because there's pictures and everything. Each set has a different theme and are catered to different age groups. So one is for five plus, but there's also others like male physics for eight plus or male chemistry for 10 plus. Wow. They strive to make serious science accessible, interesting, and cool. It's also cool for adults. What I love about them is that each box comes with everything you need for the project. So every time you do one of these sets, you learn so much from the problem solving skills to science discovery. Guess what? We have a promo code. You can use tech and it'll give you 60% discount for the first month for any of their subscriptions. Also, the offer is limited for this month. So make sure before the end of January, going and visiting melscience.com. Use your promo code tech to receive 60% discount for the first month on any of these great STEM related science projects. That's melscience.com. Use your promo code tech to receive 60% discount for the first month. Yeah, man, it's really cool. This is Nathan Mum and Mike Roday from Tech Time with Nathan Mum on Kixie AM 880. Hey, Nathan, are you enjoying broadcasting on Kixie 880 AM? I sure am, Mike. I love being a part of the new Kixie 880 AM local channels from 3 to 4 p.m. on Tuesdays, where you get the best technology news without having to geek out. Don't miss the show because you're always going to get the most up-to-date technology information. Listen to us live Tuesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. on Kixie 880 AM. I'll be there with bells on. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, have you ever wanted to give the gift to history? I always want to give the gift of history. All right. Well, guess what? You can journey through the annuals of time with curated letters from George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison, and more delivered by mail to your mailbox each and every week. That sounds awesome. Yes. Guess what? Give the gift of historical letters to loved ones. Historical gift packs are a journey through history's most significant moments from the formation letters of the founding fathers at the birth of the United States to letters that changed the course of World War II. At historicmail.com, you can visit historicmail.com. This is the perfect gift for a history buff delivered right to their doorstep. Who can I get a letter from? You get a letter from many different historical individuals, including Henry Ford, George Washington, and journeys throughout all of our great American history. You can get yourself a regular priced subscription for 10 weeks worth 10 letters being sent out to you for the regular price of $59.99. What kind of letters are they? Ah, these letters are actual reproductions of the real letters or messages are written by historical figures. They always include a few paragraphs of contact information to shed some light on the fascinating historical context behind the correspondence as well. Make sure to visit historicmail.com to learn more information. Coming to you from the shores of the Pacific Northwest, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, Hmm, pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to tech time radio with Nathan mum. It's Tuesday. It is Tuesday. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, mmm. Technology News of the Week, the show for the common, everyday person with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. I'm Nathan Mum, and welcome to our show. We're live streaming, doing our show on four of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, and Facebook. We encourage you to watch us live at TechTimeRadio.com to keep up with all of our technology information. Plus, see how we rate our whiskey pick of the day. If you're a Twitter fan, you can go online and hashtag us at Tech Time Radio. So that's hashtag, or they used to call it the pound sign, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we grew up with. Yeah, the pound sign, Tech Time Radio, and we'll do our best to answer your tweets on the air and after the show. Mike and I have been providing a segmented technology radio show for over two years now with a funny spin. Visit TechTimeRadio.com and make sure you say hi and sign up for our newsletter or subscribe to the best technical information or be part of the Tech Timers Facebook group to talk with us. 
Tech Time is a weekly hour technology show that talks about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by Nathan Mum, myself, a multi-business executive who's worked 10 years at Microsoft and five years at Vulcan Inc. in the Seattle area. I'm a technologist with over 30 years of expertise, a keynote speaker on technology subjects from security to blockchain and everything in between. Oh, yeah. My co-host, Mike Gorday, is an award-winning author originally from Arizona. He's a human solutions consultant and coach living in the Seattle area with an MA degree. He combines his continued education in human behavior with his 20-plus years career helping clients navigate the rocky roads of obtaining goals and changing their line. Mike keeps me from geeking out and providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We're two friends that come together from different backgrounds for bringing the best technology show possible each week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. We welcome you to join one of these groups as we start our show, Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Okay, Odie, let's get ready to start the show. Now on today's show. All right, today on the show, Microsoft is purchasing Activision Blizzard. Breaking news, we're going to be talking about that. How does this shape Microsoft's metaverse? Twitter expands features uh, allowing users to flag misleading tweets, and Russia fines Google for not deleting banned content. Yeah. Yeah. It's a whole big deal. We got we got a bunch of Russia stuff going on, and yeah. Russia, Russia is like Russia, the- Russia's the, the king of news today. Yeah. They, they say, you know what? Bad, bad, bad boy, but we're not maybe going to do anything about it. Well, we're just going to say that you're a bad boy. We'll be talking that in our Protect Yourself Today, specifically yeah. regarding the gang Revol. So we'll be talking about that, the cyber gang that has been creating terror for the last three years on the cyber front. So we'll be talking about that. Then, of course, we have This Week in Technology, along with Protect Yourself Today, was we're talking about- Stories you didn't know, and of course, our pick of the day whiskey tasting. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now, let's start our show with our loaded question of the week brought to you by Elderberry Boost. The week? El- uh, the, yeah, the loaded reek? question of the week. Well, it's it's for a week, right? You said reek. Oh, did I say reek? Sorry. <laughs> I was just smelling something. So, yeah, I guess. <laughs> from, from, from my co host. No, just talking. Question of the week brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. All right, Mike and Odie, here you can listen to this one. We're going to have you start joining our questions coming up. Okay, you ready to go? She's going to be ready oh, to go. Oh, boy, here. she looks really excited. I know. She's very excited. She's very excited. All right. All right. If you had the power to cure one disease, what would you cure? Mike, you're up first. Life. <laughs> Cure life? <laughs> How do you cure life? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think if we were talking about uh, what we normally think is diseases, I, I think Alzheimer's would be my pick. And you know, my mom's going through that. So that 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 is a that is a tough disease to go through, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, you go from recognizing people to not recognizing people to oh yeah, everything in between. Yeah, yeah. All right, Odie. The question is for you. I'd love to cure cancer, specifically cancer. brain cancer. Specifically, brain cancer. Yeah, that yeah. works. Yeah, yeah the cancer. The cancer would have been a great one to say too. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to uh, say. Are you taking her side? Well, I'm going to say that. Yeah, I'm going to say COVID nineteen. This a, has been that, yeah, two and a half years of crap. A, that's a cop out. Uh, what, are you, what are you talking about? This has that's just a, been. Uh, that's the obvious choice. That's the obvious choice. All right. Well, I, I stick with out. the obvious items. All right. Well, that that's was an obvious. All right. Well, that was brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Make sure you visit elderberry-boost.com to get your elderberry, elderberry supplements. Boost. That's right. All right, Mike. We're going to have our whiskey tasting during the commercials. We'll select the whiskey, and we'll get to do a zero, one, or two thumbs up. Pick of the day, kind of Cisco and Ebert style. We pick that. And now we have been told that our palate necessarily isn't uh, a pro palate for whiskey. We just kind of like whiskey. If it's good and we would drink it, it gets a thumbs up, right? Yeah, that's, that's, I'm, not a, I'm not an aficionado in, in the upper echelons of whiskey tasting. If it tastes good to me, I like it. I give it a thumbs up, and I... We'll drink it. If I don't like it, you give it a thumbs I down. Give it a thumbs down. That's exactly so. So that's not. It's it can be purely, a tw- it's purely hedonistic on my part. And, and it's really the matter of the day, the matter of the mood. And, and you know what? If if we had a bad a, a bad right. day, any whiskey may get a thumbs think, up just for I, yeah. the taste of it, right? I think I think you got called. What would they call you? A softy? Yeah. When you call no uh, or was, cheapo too. <laughs> You're a cheapo softy. <laughs> yeah, the, okay. I just like all the whiskey. So I, I mean, it's got to be a pretty bad whiskey for me to turn it down. Let me just put it that way. I, I'm, I'm, well, yeah, I'm, but you, yeah, you don't like. There, well, was I don't have a, a very high palate. But no. we're we talking about no. that too. 
All right. Let's get our I episode. Re- I don't have a refined taste. I, I don't have a refined taste. Although I do tend to pick the really good ones over you. Do. Over you. you do. That is, that is, you have a better taste for that. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Now let's get our episode started with our first segment. This is called our top stories in the first five minutes. This brings you the top technology stories everyone will be talking about for weeks to come within the first five minutes of the show. Let's start this off now. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right. Welcome to top stories in the first five minutes. Story number one, Microsoft to acquire Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion. That is streaming right now. Big news this morning, breaking the news. We are going to go right go to our CNBC roundtable, and we have some audio of this breaking story. This is some big news that's coming out right now. It looks like... Um Microsoft is going to be buying Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard shares have been halted with this news pending that's coming out on this. The big question that I'm looking at right now is just whether regulators will ultimately approve a transaction like this, you know, under the sort of traditional antitrust theory. Meanwhile, Microsoft has remained largely outside of the sort of target of Washington, in large part because it dealt with that, if oh, is you will, this a, a metaverse, uh, more than two uh, decades ago. Is, number one, is it a, a metaverse play? I don't know. Yeah. We're all going to be playing Huge around. Huge metaverse play. I think, and that's, Satya I think, Nadella from a strategic kind of hinted at this. Yeah, Satya, Satya Nadella has, has hinted at this. Yeah, all right. Satya Nadella says the deal will play a key role in development of the metaverse platform. So there's, so Microsoft and Facebook are doing metaverse now. It was just That's like, a new this buzzword. is just a competition between all these guys now. They they always get into these competitions with each other. They so. do. All right. But Microsoft it's is metaverse a metaverse co- everything. That's right. That's the new buzzword, right? Yeah. Like low hanging fruit. You ever go to those meetings where you have the, the, the consultant guy come on in there and he's got we're gonna hit the low hanging fruit, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do all those he's buzzwords. All, he's got all the buzzwords yeah. going on, like uh I I, I, we, we, I used to work at a company and any time they do a buzzword uh, we would just start counting You start them. drinking. Yeah, we'd start just counting yeah, them up. Some, some little whiskey game. That's right. That's right. All right, so Microsoft's going to acquire Activision, the troubled publisher with Call of Duty, which has been struggling, World of Warcraft, probably their biggest title of all time, and Diablo. The deal will value Activision at $68.7 billion, far less uh, in the excess of the $26 billion Microsoft paid to acquire LinkedIn. And they've done a pretty good job with LinkedIn, to be honest, on their acquisition of that in 2016. So I got some positive. I, I think Microsoft can maybe pull this off. Activision has great brand. Well, is it really up to them? Well, it's going to Microsoft's main leader is going to be taking over, and, and their Activision CEO is going to only be here during the temporary process, and then he will take down. So essentially, the Microsoft's CEO and gaming Phil Spencer will be in charge of Activision Blizzard's category moving forward. Mm-hmm. Now, the key thing about this is Xbox Game Pass, which now has more than 25 million subscribers as the Microsoft continues to acquire studios to boost the subscription service. Now, I have Xbox Game Pass. Do you have Xbox Game Pass? Uh, not right now. You don't right now. No, I I got rid of all my subscription services prior to getting married. Uh, okay, get, it, it, was that a little marriage thing? That was yeah. A marriage thing. Okay, so I you know what? Thank goodness I've been I, married. I have student loan debts to take care of. Okay, I, I've been married for twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Who knows how many years? I'll you're, get you're in trouble. Gonna, well, you're well, going to get in trouble for I, that. I, I will. I'll wait. I'll wait for my wife to there's, text me exactly what it is. Ding yeah. ding ding. All right. So it's twenty eight years, but essentially, I have the Microsoft Game Pass, and so do my boys, mm-hmm. and we play lots of games there, and they have some first rate titles that you can just download with that Game Pass and never even have to purchase. A oh, game. I know. It's subscription services. Yep. I just so the don't have that much time to play games anymore. Uh, okay, all right. Microsoft deal comes after months of sexual harassment claims against Activision Blizzard. We talked about this last year. The company reached an eighteen million dollars settlement on the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in September. The settlement is being appealed, but the reports indicate that nearly fifty Activision Blizzard employees have reportedly exited the company. Since last July, Microsoft's huge Activision Blizzard deal comes nearly a year after the company acquired Bethesda uh, for $7.5 billion at a time with acquisition bolstering the company's first party X game studio for a total of 23 uh, major studios that they have. Now, the key here is if this actually happens, it will move Microsoft into the number third position for games behind Sony. Behind Sony? Who's the first? 
Uh, so it is interactive entertainment. So I guess it's like a, I, a, a, IA. So yeah, I, I guess it's a whole bunch EA of sports. Uh, no, it's no, not EA not sports. That. No, it's it's a whole bunch of mobile games, Japan mobile oh, that's games. Right. So it's a, really a studio over in Japan based that is a bunch of mobile games that the, that we try to do every once in a while, maybe on the Switch or something, but doesn't have it. Sony is the American. Well, they're not even American. They're Japanese based company, right? Mm-hmm. But they are the number two. Biggest Lot. thing, this will now move Microsoft into three. Uh, what do you think about that? that? Well, I think that's kind of cool. I think I, I think I Microsoft guess. does. I, it, I think Microsoft does a good job of keeping the studios pretty separate too, so they can work on their IP. Really well, well, I hope so, because you know, as they mentioned in the introduction here, they have run afoul of antitrust things. Before and they have, I believe you were. I was employed when, during the time when they, they that, were they yep. were into that mess. I was, and so hopefully they can make sure that this doesn't uh, get locked up. So all right, we'll see. I think Mike. I think you got story number two here. Here's a here's a gr- great story. All right, story number two. You're up. Yeah, Twitter expands feature allowing users to flag misleading tweets. Misleading tweets. Who would ever send out a misleading tweet? Oh, I have no idea who would do that. <laughs> Oh, the previous- Twitter Inc. said on Monday it will expand its test feature as a test feature, uh-huh. which allows users to flag misleading content on its social media platform in Brazil, Spain, and the Philippines. Okay. The company had introduced the pilot test of the feature in August of last year as part of its effort to reduce misinformation on its platform. Since it was first announced, Twitter said has it has received around 3 million reports from users who will have used it to flag tweets which they believe or in violation of his policies. All right. So, so it's kind of like basically the, uh, t- tattle on each a t- other. A tattletale? Yeah. So if I don't yeah. like what you say or if I think it could be mistruths, so then I can just tag it and then maybe you get yelled yeah. at by a Twitter cop. That's exactly what it uh, sounds Jack like. Dorsey. So he, YouTube is taking off dislikes from their platform and Twitter is adding them. That's right. <laughs> so now you can tattle on people. <laughs> so that's you right. Can tattle. So the social media giant last year launched another program called Birdwatch, yep. which lets participants write notes and provide additional context to misleading tweets, Those the though these notes are held on a separate website. Yes, so it's not we'll see how way. that plays out in the, in the big forum. All right. That's great. All right. Story number three, Russia finds Google for not deleting banned content. Yeah, so, I love this. So this is interesting. Moscow and Russia is going to be all over our uh, items today. A Moscow court on Monday said that it had ordered Alphabet's Google to pay four million rubles. Yeah, how many? How, how much is that in dollars? Uh, Fifty thousand plus, right? <laughs> Fifty thousand plus for not removing access to the content banned in Russia. The latest of strings of fines from the U.S. tech giant that Russia has assessed. That, that sounds like a grease bomb. Yeah, I know. Russia's <laughs> up the ante last year in its efforts to increase pressure on big tech, handling massive revenue-based fines. To Google and Meta platforms for repeatedly failing to remove contact or in content Moscow deems illegal. So if Moscow says it's illegal, it's just like China too, right? I mean, oh, yeah. so you just all say, these countries have their own ideas of what should and should not be news on the internet. That's right. Is it, whatever news is, it better not be negative. All right, Google declined to comment. I probably went to you there for fifty thousand dollars. Well. They so put, I mean, it puts this is kind of an interesting situation, right? Yep. So it's fifty two thousand U.S. dollars. Yep. What is that? That's that's like nothing. That's like chump change for that's Google. Chump right? change. That's probably the, that's yeah, probably like, like one hours of advertising. Yeah, like just just in the Pacific so, Northwest. So is it really about? Is it really about uh, taking this stuff off the platform, or or just giving them an access fee? Uh, I think they're just trying. You know, I think they're just. <laughs> They're going to use this so they can subsidize whatever yeah, uh, whatever thing they needed to do. Maybe they wanted to go golfing on the on the course and know. take a private helicopter. I, All right, I, I, I don't think it's really going to hurt Google that that much. No, nope. the TASS news agency reported that Google has been fined on other instances for providing access to links in banned websites, and sometimes they pay and sometimes they don't. Well, Mike. Our time is up. We got through our top stories. If you want to learn more about these, please visit us online at www.techtimeradio.com and click on our episode section or the blog or get even more details for stories and features. Now it's time to get ready for our whiskey tasting at the break. But up next, we have our technology insider segment with a story about how uh, artificial intelligence is taking over both voice replication and can it distinguish brush strokes from different artists? We're going to be talking all about AI. Very interesting. So they got AI that's going to come on out that now can essentially take our vocal cord uh, synopsis of how we speak 
and then translate it and come up with their own words and, and create our own dialect. And then second of all, we're going to have these artists that are going to tell us about how they can actually have AI take a look at the brush strokes and see if it was a legitimate or a copied artificial art. That's, wow. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, okay. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll, we'll see you guys right after this. This is Nathan Mum and Mike Roday from Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what? I got a secret to tell you. Tech Time Radio is moving to Kixie AM 880 on Tuesday, January 11th from 3 to 4 p.m. No way. Yes. We are moving the Tech Time Radio show that has blown up on KKNW 1150, and we're now moving it over to Kixie. Do I have to keep the secret? Uh, no. We, we're, we need to tell everybody about it so they can see the explosion. January 11th of Tech Time Radio from 3 to 4 p.m. Hey, Mike. What's up? Hey, with 2022 coming along, guess what? We got some news to announce. What are we going to announce? Well, we are announcing that we are going to be continuing to broaden our show, and we're moving to Kixie 880. 880 AM KIXI? Starting January 11th. We are going to be on Tuesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. But don't you fear, because everybody at KKNW will still continue to have our show broadcasting on Saturdays for the two hours, and of course, our replay options on Thursday morning. Awesome. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that eight-ounce size. It's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry, that's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. All right. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. We just had our first whiskey tasting on our whiskey review, Mike, during the break. We got to sample our whiskey and our pick of the day during the show. Today, we have chosen the first call Kentucky straight bourbon. All right. This is 90 proof, uh, $22.99 for a 750 milliliter bottle. Mm. We got it displayed here on our live stream. You can take a look at it. Um, it's it, covered by it's covered by our logo right now. It what's that? It's covered by our <laughs> it's logo right now. Covered by our logo right now. Oh, that's a, <laughs> we'll get the overlays taken care of. All right, so the first call Kentucky straight bourbon and rye whiskey were crafted in homage to America's original sport, thoroughbred racing. The Kentucky's iconic role in development as far back as early 18th century before the introduction of our thoroughbreds to North America inspired spectators and racers that recognized the first call or the call to the post signaling it's time to get off to the races. This is a butterscotch taste from the nose coming off the glass. It has a little bit of vanilla. It's got a little bit of brown sugar backing it up and a very light on the nose due to its young age. So it is made from First Call IJW Whiskey Company, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. It's the IJW Whiskey Company, and this is their classification of straight bourbon whiskey only available uh, from uh, online sports. Uh, Wines and More is the only place that you can actually get this, and we're going to talk about why that's the place. Okay. But that's well, where I got it. What, what's your taste so far of it? I actually uh, liked it. I'm liking it so far. It's got a very nice balance to it. A little burn. Uh, a little bit of a burn. Made but, my lips tingle. But that's, but not too much, right? I mean, it's, it's not bad. No, it's not no, bad no. at all. All right. Well, that's good. Well, that's got a good got a good spicy taste. We'll see how it does after it our, taste oak. Our, our second and third tasting. All right. So, um, all right. Let's get back to the show. Today, we're going to be talking all about the world of AI. We're going to be talking about two different 
ways the AI is making a difference in our world. We have this special, so let's begin our segment now. Welcome to Technology Insider. We get the information directly from the source. All right. How's artificial intelligence shaping <laughs> our intelligence? How's <laughs> woo, a little bit of that whiskey? I, mean, I need to cure your pronunciation. <laughs> That's right. Sure. How's artificial intelligence shaping our world? Let's take a look at the world of AI. Using artificial intelligence to digitally replicate human voices. The science behind making machine talks just like humans is very complex because our speech patterns are so complicated. Yes, there's they not, are. There's, it's kind of like a fingerprint. No one is exactly the same. That's true. And they are affected by anything from uh, emotional responses to different times of the day. Yeah, and dialect and different tongues and speech patterns, all are very complicated. So we're going to go to one of the smartest companies in the world, and that is a company that is based out of San Francisco Bay Area. And they have essentially come up with a synthetic process called speech morphin, and they are the leaders in creating a clone or digital double of your voice with exactly 10 to 15 minutes of a recording of your basic build, according to speech morphing founder and CEO, Fathi Yasa. Yasa said the company chooses utterance that will produce a wide enough variety of sounds to across the range of emotions, including apologetic, enthusiastic, and angry, and so on, to feed a natural-based AI in this training system. It essentially teaches itself the specific patterns of a person's speech. Yasa said that there are 20 effects and tones to choose from, and some of these can be interchangeable and some not at all. Not every tone or reflection is needed for every client. He says the choice depends on the target's application and use case. Banking so, and... What's so that? What do we really need this for? Well, we're going to talk about that. So banking is different from ebooks, and is, and ebooks is different from reporting and broadcasting. Each of these are different consumers that essentially use the same technology. The fast-growing industry, the global speech and voice recognition industry, is worth ten of billions of dollars and is one of the fastest growing in the nation. It uses uh, the technology given for specific actor Val Kilmer, who lost his voice to throat cancer, to essentially be empowered to have his former vocal cords used for a complete movie. Okay, well, so, that's good for him. So, yeah, so it enables film directors, audiobook creators, and game designers to develop characters without the need of live voice acting talent on hand oh, so we can replace people's job. For, that's bad for voice actors. It is. Even a cloned version of Barack Obama's voice warning people about the dangers of fake news created by actor and film director Jordan Peele hammers the point home. Which is very disturbing. It is. Sometimes we have to be caused to worry because these machines sound too much like us. Yeah, the problem the problem is is we we did a story not too long ago about how somebody used voice cloning technology to steal a bunch of money from I a think bank. It was a bank. Yep. And, and they essentially called in on the phone. Right. They called in on the phone and used this technology to uh, clone the bank. Was it the bank manager? Yep. Make bank uh, approvals voice, uh, to approve some transfers, and they got money. So that's this is the interesting thing about this, right? Everything that everything that technology develops. There's there's this dark side to it that we really I we don't know if it's really appropriate to use voice to I, develop. Yeah, so I mean this is so good. So I mean uh, the Barack Obama video that Jordan Peele has, you can just go and uh, Google it, YouTube it, Jordan Peele. It's probably not safe for work. There's some uh, profanities and some different items that are in there, but it was amazing to see how they had very little dialogue and they ex actually explain a little bit on the process there. And how you can actually clone somebody's voice, and, and it, it really sounded like it was. Well, it did, Barack but Obama there's still talking. there's still that uncanny valley quality to it, where you can you can kind of detect something wrong, which at this point I think is a great thing. You know what? It's gonna be tough to uh, clone an AI after me. Well, because you're gonna have to every once in a while just mispronounce a word that's in the yeah, basic I don't know English. That you could, English. I don't. I don't. I don't think you could be cloned. I don't think so many. So many. <laughs> Different Miss weird words that I come up with sometimes reading stuff off paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, 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 what, like, like that would be a telltale sign that it wasn't Nathan Mum actually speaking. But you know, as this as this stuff develops more, that uncanny valley is going to get smaller. That's that's the that's the problem. And then, what is this going to be used for outside of what people the entertainment are saying, purpose? So yeah, right now we use it in the entertainment. Saying, yeah, business, people are right? saying that it's it's mostly built for entertainment. But you know, there's like we've reported, there's people that are using this for other nefarious purposes. There are. And this is this is the problem with 
how we interact with technology is that there's always this problematic piece that seems to be I'm always talking about the problematic pieces. <laughs> that's because you're the... Because I'm the human behavior guy. Yeah, that's right. All right, so let's talk about something a little bit nicer. How AI tech can now distinguish brush strokes of different artists. Researchers using 3D scanning and AI are now able to identify artists from tiny samples of their paintings. The new artificial AI tool may be able to foil fraud and help art historians determine the original creators behind particular paintings. The system analyzed tiny sections of the painting, some as small as half a millimeter, for telltale differences in brushwork. Uh, reports from Benjamin Sutton from the Art Newspaper. Well, previous projects used a form of machine learning to identify artists based on the analysis of high-resolution imaging of the paintings. The new system uses topographical scans of the canvases. We broke the painting down into virtual patches ranging from one half a millimeter to a few centimeters squares so that we no longer have to have the information about the subject matter, says Michael Heinz Whiskey. Another case, Western uh, psychologist and co-author of the study. What? Heinz Whiskey. You, you pronounced it. You pronounced it wrong, even though you had a, you had <laughs> was a thing there. Hi, Heinz, 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 Heinz Whiskey. Heinz Whiskey. That's Heinz Whiskey. All right. In a statement, but we can accurately predict who painted it from an individual patch, and that's amazing. So essentially, what the study does is it takes that half millimeter to a few centimeters squares. It looks at the brush stroke, how it was done originally, what type of acrylic paint it's using, what type of stroke it was from the brush itself. And as if you touch that up. So are we, are we talking about classical artists or new artists here? Because uh, it does here's, both. So here's the problem that I, well, maybe it's not a problem. I don't know. But the question that first came to mind is, I, you know, I took some art classes in college and stuff. And one of the things that classical artists did and other artists do is that they develop techniques and just like you know, uh, people improving their golf swing or changing their golf swing, they, they change their brush strokes over time. So they evolve into different. Well, arts. I think, I think what they do is I think the idea of this is to look at the paint strokes that begin the painting, um, throughout the painting. So sometimes you go and you can have art that gets touched up by individuals. Right. And so sometimes you don't have the same exact length of the brush. You may not have the same exact, uh, horse hair that you're using, you may not have the same exact process that you're using, but normally painting by painting, mm -hmm. unless you do it over a long uh, time, should be the same type of stroke and patterns and paint and, and processes now, that overall, you're using. Overall, I'm thinking that this is a pretty good use of technology, especially when you consider that there are a lot of uh, fraud going on in the art world. You That's know, correct. If I, pick up a, if I pick up a Van Gogh and I take it to somebody and they appraise it and say, oh, yeah, this is original. How do I know? Uh, now they'll be able to take a look at the actual AI for the brush strokes itself. So the AI is trying to distinguish the original portions of paintings and the uh, paintings and the ability for historians to actually correct certain times over the era. It would be really terrible to find out that all these things hanging in the Louvre are all fake. Or all <laughs> fake. They, they, they look at AD, it. This AI went in there. Nope, that's not that. <laughs> that would be pretty tough. Nope, definitely. that's not them. <laughs> then this artwork isn't legit. This yeah. isn't legit. And then you got something in somebody's uh, downstairs basement right yeah, next but, to the but poker also, playing also, dogs. Yeah, and, and you we got also the know that, that a lot of the things that we see in museums are replicas of, of what are actually not on view for the public. Correct. So... Like if you go and take a look at the Constitution of let's Independence. Let's go take. Let's go take this AI and just go walk around the museum and see what see what it. We we might confuse beep, the beep, crap beep. out of it. Keep sign coming up. Fake, 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 fake. <laughs> <laughs> we were like at the the art institute and we're like, uh, yeah, none of this is original. What are we doing here? What are we doing here? Yeah, you got some lithograph uh, paintings that you redid yourselves. Okay, well, we're at the point of figuring out the basics and the concepts with the technology that's available now to authenticate works of art. With the AI technology. We're going to take a break, and when we return, we're going to have This Week in Technology. I'm Nathan Mum with Tech Time Radio, along with Microday, our human uh, lie detector. That's what I call you, right? Our human lie detector, the really lie to me guy. Lie yeah, the lie to me lie show. To me we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll see you guys right after this break. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration. The electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine, especially those Rockstar and Gatorade substitutes? 
Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronic Hydration. Sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich, electrolyte, powdered packets for daily use, containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste. Their product contains elderberry. Elderberry. Which has immune-boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season. Hydronic Hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling. Your busy days in 2022 can change. Do you want a sugar-free, keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts? If so, give Hydronic Hydration a try. You can visit the website at www.hydroniquehydration. It's www.hydroniquehydration.com hydration.com that's the word hydration and unique mashed together or you can search for hydronique hydration on amazon.com or on their own website at hydronique hydration.com and now let's look back at this week in technology all right we have january 17th 1984 the supreme court ruling on home vcr recordings remember the vcr I'm older than you are. Okay, well, so so remember the VCR, right? I was around. I was around when the Betamax was was so it's beta. Thing, yeah, the beta, thing was, to beta do. was way better than the VHS. I know, but VHS took off more. That mar- that's that's what you call marketing. That's what you call marketing and, and the and mass the, production. Man, I, the, and it's always the funny thing is the the fifty million dollar fine or whatever the heck it was. Yeah, remember well, that big red splash screen? Oh, or you like, got to come on a FBI warning when yeah, you come out. FBI after warning. Your yeah. Well, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled five to four that private use of home VCRs to tape TV programs for later viewing does not violate federal copyright laws. That's good. We all be in trouble. Then. I know. <laughs> I, I remember the taping Star Trek: The Next Generation. And let me just tell you, if my VCR did not work right, and I would come home because we were always doing something when Star Trek was on, and you missed it, either the power went off and it started going back to 12 o'clock instead of the Uh time that was on there. Did you program your VCR? Oh, yeah. You're the the geek that programmed it. Oh, yeah. I had it all programmed so it was ready to go, or if the tape got eaten, or if it ran out and I missed that Star Trek The Next Generation episode, oh, my word. In the mum household, it was not a very good day. Streaming services and now. DVR, yeah. yes, that's right. All right, well, the ruling opened the floodgate for VCR sales, changing the landscape of TV watching forever, and made people change their movies. Like when ET came out, Back to the Future came out, they all came out with theatrical releases that mm-hmm. you could then sometimes purchase on Laserdisc, or you could tape off the television show and they'd re-edit like swear words, a couple scenes, oh, I hated that. and then I all of a, hated you'd have a voiceover. All of a sudden, Doc's looking at his watches, and instead of saying the uh, D word, it'd be like, "Darn it, darn it!" It was some other voiceover that, load type of deal. Is that, is like, that your is that your impression? Darn it. Of Doc? No, that, that would have been as good as the voiceover at that time. All right, well that <laughs> takes us. Maybe through. you need a voice clone. I didn't need a voice clone. All right. When we come on back, we're going to take a look from our Protect Yourself Today. I'm Nathan Munn, the technology expert, along with Microday, our human solution experts, and Odie, our engineer. You're listening to the show that makes you go, oom. We'll see you after this commercial break. Hey, Mike. What's up? Hey, with 2022 coming along, guess what? We got some news to announce. What are we going to announce? Well, we are announcing that we are going to be continuing to broaden our show, and we're moving to Kixie 880. 880 AM KIXI? Starting January 11th. We are going to be on Tuesdays from 3 to 4 p.m. But don't you fear, because everybody at KKNW will still continue to have our show broadcasting on Saturdays for the two hours, and of course, our replay options on Thursday morning. Awesome. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code techtime. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's going on? 
Hey, do you ever feel tired, have a headache, or maybe a little bit under dehydrated? Yeah, I get told that I need to hydrate more often. Guess what, Mike? I have a solution for you. What And what is it? Hydronique Hydration. The electrolyte power drink packets are available for you now. Started in the midst of the pandemic, the founder of Hydronique Hydration, a frontline healthcare worker, started developing constant headaches. Do you know that most powdered drinks on the market have tons of sugar and caffeine, especially those Rockstar and Gatorade substitutes? Yeah, like you drink. So I'm going to need to change. So what did the founder do? Well, that's why he created Hydronique Hydration, sugar-free, keto-friendly, plant-based, antioxidant-rich electrolyte powdered packets for daily use containing all the essential vitamins and minerals with a refreshing taste their product contains elderberry elderberry which has immune boosting properties for supporting during cold and flu season hydronic hydration electrolyte powder packets can also fit in your bag or suitcase when traveling your busy days in 2022 can change do you want a sugar-free keto-friendly vitamin drink to give you hydration boosts if so give hydronique hydration a try you can visit the website at www.hydronique hydration it's www.hydronique hydration.com that's the word hydration and unique mashed together or you can search for hydronique hydration on amazon.com or on their own website at hydronique hydration.com Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. I'm your host and the technology expert. We have our human solution consultant, my lie to me expert, Mike Corday here on the side. I, I don't know why you keep calling me that. I, 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 I called you that when we first started the show. Remember that? That is true. So we're going back. We've got some new listeners. So we just want to know you. Have you ever watched that show, Lie to Me? There was that little twitches and those little things. Oh, yeah. I, I studied all that. You studied all I that. I have a forensic psychology degree, and I studied that as a side gig while I was taking taking... Well, I was studying for my degree, and uh, so I learned all about facial yeah. expressions. And Lie to Me is is a one of my favorite shows. Yeah, so. I like that show. That, that dude, uh, he used to always twitch a little bit. He was he was he was fantastic. That actor. yeah. All right, well, we have our uh, pick of the day. We had our first call, Kentucky Straight Bourbon. Now let's talk a little bit about the IG Whiskey Company, a privately owned whiskey company whose ownership is not disclosed, but it's based in Kentucky. The business doesn't have a distillery and doesn't seem to plan one or build one soon. Instead, they decide to source whiskey from other distilleries and lay down the first barrels of spirits for aging since they have in Danville, Kentucky, based warehouse in 2016. So this whiskey does not even come from a real whiskey house. But, really? but... I want to know who the undisclosed company is. Well, you don't know. <clears throat> it, it, it doesn't say what the age is. First Call is reportedly a brand that is unique to total wine chain stores, as we talked about. And you know what? I may actually go buy some more. I actually enjoyed it so far. It's been it's been trending towards a thumbs up for me. I don't know well, what, you, what, are you, what you're thinking. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> are you enjoying it? Oh, yeah. I okay. finished mine already. All right. <laughs> yeah, I finished yours. We still have one more segment. That, la- to to. that last taste was really good. All right. Okay. <laughs> Let's now get I'm ready. Not gonna, to... I'm not going to spoil my, my don't, thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, don't, don't do not do that because we have to do that at the end of the show. All right, our next segment deals with information about security breaches, hacks, and criminal takeovers of technology. As Mike calls this, this is the... This is the drinking section. The drinking section and segment of the story. Let's get ready to start right now. Protect yourself today. All right, let's talk about the big volcano that's happened. Have you heard that there's a volcano that went off? Yeah, we got a we had a tsunami warning all along the west coast today. We did. We kept on or this weekend. We kept on buzzing and, and going. Essentially, this is on Tonga, uh, and it essentially has crippled their communication pipe. We talked about this a couple we, weeks ago. We talked about these lines of communication. They're they're dredged underneath the ocean, and what has happened is twenty percent of cybercrime since the volcano activity happened has dissipated. So did all of so, that cybercrime so come out of is that meaning the that, Pacific Island nations? Yeah. Is those that are very happened? high. Those or, are very high. Or is it the way they route the information across? Well, space? see, they, the Pacific Islands are normally a hub and a VPN hub for people to actually use to have servers based on the Pacific Islands 
because their regulations are very relaxed compared to other countries. And it's so the Pacific Islands. Correct. So essentially cybercrime went down. Now it's really sad because there are people that aren't being able to have the internet service available and communications with phone lines and terrestrial lines that drudge across. So it's not so a do we joking know- ma- matter, but it is interesting this uh criminal activity has gone down with that pipe that's no longer being uh, accessed across the ocean. Do we know if the volcanic eruption severed that pipe or so- just Disrupted well, it from other means. Well, essentially, th- there's a huge ash cloud on the island, right? And right. so the assumption has been that the cable connecting the islands and the rest of the world has been severed. Okay. So they haven't gone down and verified it yet, but that is well, the expectation. I, I don't think they probably can verify it quite but, yet. Well, you know what? what's happening? Australia and New Zealand are sending military flights out to take a look and see if they can restore the pipe. Yeah. There you go. All right. Restore, or, restore the uh, cyber crime. Or is it... That Russia has taken down the Revil Hacking Group to lead us to less cyber criminal activity. Have they? Well, let's take a look. Russia has <laughs> dismantled, quote unquote, dismantled ransomware crime group Revil at the request of the United States in an operation in which is detained in charge of the group members. The FSBA Domestic Intelligence Service said on Friday the arrests were a rare. A uh, demonstration by the U.S.-Russian collaboration at the time for high tension between the two over Ukraine. Yeah. So Russia's going to go invade well, Ukraine. We have we have this political thing going on. Right? Yep. But so Russia, we all always have relations with other countries. Yes. Yeah, so, so Russia decided to give an olive branch to America, the Revo Group, that essentially shut down our pipelines for oil, mm-hmm. has disrupted many different uh, MSP works. You mean the Revo Group that retired after that? Yeah, well, and, so then, uh, and, and then, then we then came back again. Came back again with all new. <laughs> Yes. Manage, under new management. <laughs> yeah, so the announcement came as Ukraine was responding to a massive cyber attack also and shut down government websites throughout. So there's no indication that the incidents were related. Uh-huh. Well, the United States welcomes the arrest, according to a senior administrative official. We understand that one of the individuals who was arrested today was responsible for an attack on the colonial pipeline last spring. Uh, a May cyber attack of the colonial pipeline led to a widespread shortage for the U.S. East Coast using encryption software called Darkside, which was developed by Revol's associates. The police and FSB operations searched 25 addresses, detaining 14 people. The FSB said listening assists that were used included uh, items on site of 426 million rubles, which is $600,000, and $500,000 in euros, computer equipment, and 20 luxury cars. Russia told Washington directly the moves against the group said that they are taking it seriously. But the U.S. Embassy in Moscow said it could not immediately provide a comment. The investigation measures were based on the request from the United States, the FBC, FSB said, and the Organizational Criminal Association was ceased and to exist and will no longer be a part of the area. So we'll see. That means they're no longer in Russia. The REN TV yeah. channel aired sure. footage of agents raiding homes and arresting people, pinning them to the floor and seizing large piles of dollars and Russian rubles. The group members have been charged and will face up to seven years in Russian prison. Seven yeah, years right. in a Russian prison. A source familiar with the case told Interfax the group's members that Russian citizenship would not be handed over to the United States. John Shire, a threat research at the UK based Sophos, which is a great company. Sophos is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Security company is quoted saying that there is no independent confirmation that the self identified leaders of the defunct group have been arrested. Their website continues to continues to be a part of operation as we speak. Yeah. Well, what was that? I saw. I saw. Something I, I think. She, I, I think we. I think our new assistant said we got five minutes. Let's get going. All right. Well, that ends our segment. Next, we have stories you don't know and Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to us by Story Coffee, along with Pick of the Day. We'll see you right after this break. Thank you for listening to Tech Time. Hey, babe, I hear that you can download a new voice on Siri. No way. Yes, it's true. It's a voice that goes, hey, you big honk. What do you want to do and where do you want to go? Stop it. Oh, God. (laughs) Okay, I'm kidding. What has tech ever done for our relationships? Mm, We can't talk about that on the radio. If you want to eavesdrop on juicy conversations that no one is having around all things love, sex, and relationships, join us right here 1 p.m. on KKNW and wherever you get your podcast. We look forward to seeing you in the love shack. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. 
Read How to See a Man About a Dog, Collected Writings, for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. This is Mike's Mesmerizing Moment, presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. All right, let me ask you a question. What? What? So, so Russia says that they're going to send these people to prison. Yeah. So uh, what is the psychology based of them making a large announcement that they arrested people, which a lot of people don't think really truly happened? Why, why do people even go about doing that as countries to, to other countries? What, what's the gain from that? Well, it's comforting. Okay. You know, um, if it doesn't matter, we, we talk a lot about image engineering, or I talk a lot about in- image engineering. So okay. we're, we're, imi- we're engineering images daily like you go out you, you it's like me i'm dressed up this yeah, is look very image. nice this very is nice. an image engineer you're doing it too we we're all doing it so uh, i'm doing a little less though so, i dressed down a little bit yeah i know okay you're, you're kind of you're kind of that guy okay but uh we have these we have this these things going on with with the ukraine and uh-huh. you know i don't i don't know all the stuff that's going on i don't i don't really follow the news i, I try to stay away from it uh but it creates tension. Okay. And now we have this thing that says, oh, we're we're collaborating with the US. We're we're buddies. We're going to we're going to do this for you. Okay. Right? So they they make this show of of invading people's homes, arresting people, saying they got these guys that were responsible for this. Who knows? Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. Sure. But it gives it gives a level of comfort to other Folks. Foreign for other foreign companies. So, so you think yeah, the United States? It can deflate. But the United States it knows it may not actually lot, happen, though. It may not, it, but it deflates tension, especially tension that's built up by the media. Okay, so so it's more of a media play. Yeah, it could be. It could be a. It could be a straight up media play. Okay, All it right. could. It could be real. Well, you know, nobody nobody really is going to know, and except for the parties involved. Correct. For us. For us, it depends on what your point of view is. I don't think they got captured at all. My point of view you is You think abs- they went out and- I think it was did, all for show. And, and I they think they did, got they their hands like, slapped. They just walked down walked down the street and just arrested random people? Or? Well, no. I think they probably <laughs> actually had the right people. They slapped their hands and said, hey, don't do this anymore. But now we're going to have you have a whole new name. Don't be Revil anymore. We don't want you to do that. Here you go. We'll yeah. give you I mean, half your cars back. Of, and, there's all kinds of- And we can, we can construct theory after theory, but- from a from a psychology standpoint, we can look at the we can look at this as sort of a tension deflator. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Well, I think we're going to now move on to our. Uh, you know what? We're gonna we did not have time, and we're gonna have to have this as an added part on Tech Time Radio. We're okay. gonna have to go all of the stuff that you, things you didn't know because we had stuff about asteroids. We had a stuff about other stuff that'll be on our TechTimeRadio dot com uh, website. So you can go and get all that information in a special. Uh, deal that we have. Today. Asteroids was a cool game. Uh, Asteroids was a cool game. So, all right. So now we're going to get ready to move into our, our pick of the day. Let's move into that next. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right. We have our first call, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Rye Whiskey, crafted into America's Thoroughbred racing Kentucky iconic items. This is essentially um, our pick of the day. Yeah. And what do you think? Are you going to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Yeah, I'm going to give it a thumbs up. It's not. It's not my favorite. Okay. Uh, but it was. It was a pretty. It's a pretty good go to. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. All right. Well, I am absolutely going to give it a thumbs up. Also, I thought it was very good. I enjoy cheap whiskey. So if I can buy a whiskey that's under fifty dollars, and I can enjoy it on my back porch, looking at the beautiful sunset go down. That is a whiskey that is, that is what you, perfect. It, I I don't see you doing that. No, I don't. I, I see I, I, I see I, you I, slugging I, it behind the chicken coop <laughs> in the middle of the day because in the middle, in the middle of, the of the night I'm still editing video and doing a bunch of other stuff. But we're yeah, excited. Video games. That's right. We're excited for you guys joining us again. You missed the. Uh, Fifty-five five dot five five carat diamond that you can yes, take a look at online. We didn't get to talk about the black diamond. Yeah, uh, from uh, outer the space. Foldable, the foldable PC and laptop the, and the foldable laptop from uh, Samsung. So we'll have to talk about that, or you can find out more information about it on our website. Well, I am Nathan Mum. Thank you so much for joining Tech Time Radio. It is your weekly show to help you learn about technology news. 
We got Mike Roday here, our solutions expert. We had some great uh, sponsors. And the most important thing is, is remember that we will be back on 3 to 4 p.m. next Tuesday. From all of us, remember, the science of tomorrow starts with technology of today. Thanks for joining Bye-bye. us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.